guys, welcome back. Today we're on a journey up into Upper Maryland. Is it Upper Maryland or just like regular Maryland? I guess it's Upper Maryland. Yeah, I guess it's kind of Upper. It's somewhere up there. Uh, we're gonna go hit up Sapwood Cellars and... Uh, Manor Hill Brewing. Right, Manor Hill. Manor Hill is a 54 acre working farm and they have what appears to be a ton of great beer options. Um, we saw an Italian Pilsner, a regular Pilsner, an IPA, double IPA, uh, an, an Oud, uh, what was that one? The weird brown ale? It was like a barrel aged brown ale, the Oud something. Yeah. Oud, Oud Druid or something like that. Uh, so we're gonna go check this out and see, you know, if it's worth exploring. Here we go. So finally arrived. That was an intense journey about an hour and a half from our house maybe maybe a little bit less but this place is amazing it's it almost looks kind of like a cross between a wedding venue and a Christmas tree farm I mean there are definitely Christmas trees definite pine trees it's pretty nice and then behind me there's all these benches in what appears to be kind of like this semi covered area I'm not even sure what this actually is it looks pretty cool, and we're gonna go back out there probably. Yeah, pets are not allowed on premises at all. We have rescue cats. Thank you for understanding. So they don't want their cats being terrorized, I suppose. It smells like good smoked barbecue food right now, because there's a food truck here. Oh, look at this. It is a wedding venue, dude. Okay, we're gonna go inside, I'm thirsty. Look at this, this expansive farmland back here. I like this area. If it was a little warmer, I'd like it more. Yeah. It's really cold right now, so we're gonna like rip through this review real quick. But like this farmland area is pretty awesome because they have benches everywhere and they're really like widely spaced, so it feels nice and there's nobody out here. It's really quiet. Um, so it's a nice place. I got the uh, Italian Pilsner. Sandra got a hazy IPA, as expected. No, I did not. What is this? I got the Farm Fuzz. It's a it's a peach wit beer. Oh, I wanted to try that one. So my Italian Pilsner is is pretty all right. Uh, I get a lot of hay, a lot of biscuity. It's bready and biscuity, which is it's really nice. Um, I get a little bit of that that apple uh, note poking through, which I don't know. I didn't expect it, but mm. it's there. Um, it's it's not. It's too aggressive, but it's it's there. guy looks like Jack Black if he grew some hair and put on a life preserver. Oh, I smell the peach in that. Wow. The peach in that beer is like they took a ton of peaches and they squeezed the juice out of an actual peach. It doesn't taste like you know, like that kind of artificial peach juice you you know, you would think of. It's really balanced with the yeast. Yeah. Like you get that banana wheat beer, yep. but that also that peach is really delicate. It's very But delicate. it does taste it natural. it comes through, yeah. Yeah. Mine has a good bitterness backing it. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's a bit, there's a little bit of sweetness coming out on that. Yeah. Which I wouldn't expect out of an Italian pills. No, no. But it's, it does have a nice bite. Yeah. It's got a bite, it. it's snappy, um, but it's just not what I expected it to be is all. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Pilsner's. Um, it's clear though. I mean, you gotta, you gotta respect the clarity of that. That's crazy. All right, two new beers. I got the Red Ale. This malt profile reminds me a lot of 
the Wallops Island brown ale that that Rocket Frog has in Sterling, yeah. like that quintessential sort of like penny, almost like penny taste. This doesn't have that. Try this. Like it has a really deep malt profile. It's slightly sweet. Good oh, bitterness. Yeah, that's good. yeah right. but it's really good, and it has like a lot of those characteristics of that Wallops Island brown ale. I'm guessing that they use a lot of the same um, that malt malts. Part? Yeah. Well, there's like 13 or 14 different malts in Wallace Island, so it's crazy how it tastes almost exactly the same. It's really good. I mean, it honestly is really good. I think I might have to walk away with some of this because it's if they can it. Yeah, I think they. Have I think they do. And I have the uh, Crooked Beak, and it's a hazy 7.7 percent IPA. It's quite. It's quite good. It's a little sweet. Mm, a little residual sweetness in there. Yeah, it has all the tropical notes. Low on the oh, carbonation, yeah. but um, ooh, that's so got a lot of body. Yeah, that's got a like good body to it. Yeah, this place is turning out to be really quite good, actually. Like, I, I didn't know what to expect. A lot of the farm breweries that we hit up are not, I don't know, not the best. <laughs> they're, they're always lacking in body. That's what I find, is that all the beers that we've ever had at farm breweries seem to lack that that robust body that you expect. Whereas, like, more commercialized breweries in our area have this, like, dense body that you that you can rely on, basically. But these farm breweries never have that. I don't know why. But this one, this Manor one's Hill, doing it right. This one's doing it. One other crazy thing here is that they have they have like weird stuff like beef, like farm products, like beef and like plants that you can buy. Plants <laughs> and eggs and like they, they make their own uh, water. Oh. They they have flavored uh, what is it called? Not seltzer water, but uh, just still flavored water basically. Stuff you'd expect out of a farm. Yeah. It's like a farm plus a brewery. I'm sure you can hear the music behind us, which is like this uh, bluegrass kind of like chicken picking, <laughs> finger picking style of guitar playing. Awesome, yeah, a little banjo action. I like this. This is a good place. So Manor Hill was pretty cool. I actually liked a lot of the beers that we had. The only weird thing that I noticed, and Sandra noticed as well, is that they have a lot of land, like a lot. And, ooh, look, cows. <laughs> Let's get distracted with cows. So while it is this true farmland, they have like 55 acres or something crazy like that. It's huge. But there's not a lot of space for the actual brewery. Considering all the land they have, the actual building is very small and there's only a few tables. In comparison, yeah. yeah. It's like very strange. Overall, I really like the beer, I really like the atmosphere, and I really like the people there. So, uh, definitely recommended. So we're gonna go hit up Sapwood next and see if their beer is any good. Uh, if that place is any indication, I think we're gonna like it. All right, just made it to Sapwood Cellars. That was not a long journey at all. That was maybe five minutes down the road. So this place is pretty small, so I'm definitely gonna ask if I can do some filming before we actually do it. Uh, and people are staring at me, so I'm getting self-conscious. We're gonna stop the video right now. <laughs> made it to Sapwood Cellars. I have the, uh, what is this? The hedge trimmer. I, uh, it's a Pilsner, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's featuring Styrian Goldings from Slovenia. Um, it has a really nice earthy sort of bitterness to it. Um, a little orange zest and a little bit of lemon it tastes like anyway. I, I could be wrong, but it, I taste lemon. I get orange out of it. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's got like that sort of dry finish that I expected from a Pilsner of, of this caliber. Really nice, really nice color on it too. Is it focusing? Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, Sandra, what do you got? So I got the double citrus sorbet and it's just uh, galaxy and citra hops, I believe. That's it? 
and a ton of Madagascar vanilla beans, which are delicious, and you can totally taste it in this beer. It is really, it is really vanilla. Yeah, very vanilla. That's a really good one. We might have to take some of that home and do a kit, proper can review of that yeah. one, actually. This place is really cool. It's like down to earth, it's homey, there's art on the walls, there's plants everywhere. It's your typical industrial park sort of brewery, but feels different somehow. Maybe it's because we're in a, a different state. Could that be it? Maybe. <laughs> but it's nice. I like it. It's, yeah. it's been a while since we've gone to a brewery that has this kind of industrial park feel where like, it's just a brewery. That's it. You're right. here for the beer and that's, that yeah. is it. Yeah. And I'll that's what we kind of, that's what I remember like when we started going, getting into the beer world, like that's what we used to go to. Just yeah. breweries that existed in random parking lots like this or like random industrial parks. That's all that, it, that did exist at yeah. the time. At the so, time. and that's where we started. Yeah. So we're kind of, kind of harkening back to our roots in a way. Sapper Zellers, I've heard a lot about them, but I've never really had their beer ever. I've never had their beer. I think I've had collaboration beers with them before, but from what I understand, one of the brewers here wrote the book on IPAs. Um, you can find it on Amazon. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but they I've might have it in their merch department. Who knows? To read it. Sandra got another beer. What is this one called? Cheater Hops. There's two. There's cheaper, like as in less expensive, and, and then cheater. there's cheater, like as in you're cheating on your wife or something like that. Why did I pick that analogy? <laughs> it's horrible. This is 7.2%. It's uh, Nelson Sauvin and Citra. As you can see there, it's really hazy. That like, opaqueness level is crazy. It's dense, it's thick. That looks good. It's delicious. It says the hop combination balances winey dankness with melony fruitiness. I'm not getting a ton of melon. When I think of melon, you know, I go straight to equilibrium beers because I feel like yeah. that's what they like light but the equilibrium has like a light a light melon kind of thing. Like almost like a like a honeydew. Like sort a honeydew of thing. melon is a yeah. kind of, not a cantaloupe but a honeydew melon is that's what you get. Always what I associate with. Yeah. But I'm getting some like grassy notes on this, um, a lot of wheat. It has a nice body though. And I mean, in general, I always go for beers with Nelson Sauvin and, the yeah. and Citra Hops, like that's a classic IPA combination. It's a really awesome combination. They say they dry hop this with over four pounds per barrel of Nelson Sauvin and, and Citra, so that's that's quite a lot. But so far, like, dude, Sapport Cellars has been amazing. Um, this, the, the, all their beer is really good. We're definitely taking stuff home to uh, to review. It's pretty packed in here. I'm not sure how much footage I can get extra in here, um, just without feeling like I'm doing something weird. Filming in public is still weird for me, you know? It's like, people always come up to you and ask you, hey, what are you doing? And yeah, it, you, you could take two routes. You could just ignore them, and or you could just give them a sticker and tell them all about your what you think is a cool YouTube channel, but then it's like, I don't know. Whatever. But it is a cool YouTube channel. <laughs> you should subscribe. <laughs> for the weekend. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. We hope you had a good time following along. I thought both breweries we went to were rather delicious, actually. Yeah. There was only one beer that I was kind of like, meh. It was the uh, the Pilsner at um, Manor Hill. It was a little... A little sweet. A little sweet. A little off. Uh, but other than that, all their other beers were actually really, really good. Surprisingly good, actually. Um, so, yeah. Everything actually at... Uh, Sapwood Cellars was amazing. I'm Very really, I'm really, yeah, I'm really impressed by those guys. Uh, so we definitely got a bunch of cans to go uh, from both places, and we'll put those on the channel. Some stuff that we didn't cover before, so that's going to be interesting. I think next vlog we're going to try to do um, Wheatland Springs 
and maybe a droid theory if you guys are into that. Let us know in the comments below what you think we should do next. Um, Virginia or Maryland, I guess, is now an option. Um, and uh, we'll try to get that done. But until next time, hope you had fun. Until next time, stay crafty. Cheers.